but we're back. Yes. Today and we are I'm talking about everyone's favorite thing, which is Google Analytics, especially right now, it's an important topic because Google is changing their analytics and deprecating support for what we all used for so many years, Universal Analytics in place of GA4, Google Analytics 4. This is a long time coming, a presentation about this, and we will do our best with the knowledge that we have. And anyone who has more knowledge who's watching, please post in the comments and unblock me if I'm like floundering here. <laughs> It's quite it's a big scary change that hopefully we can make less scary. There you go. There you go. Yeah. Are we good to kick off? I think so. We have about, oh, I did say 16 people, but now it's just five. Where oh, did those 11 people you go? go? <laughs> oh, come back. You heard Google Analytics 4 and you were like, see you later. That's probably what happened. But yeah, we'll get into it. If you have comments or questions along the way, share them. Sam can interrupt me. It's okay if during it, you're kind of like, help clarify. It's probably better that way that we pause in the middle, but I have a few areas I'm going to try to cover today. I made a note, but it's a gross notepad, so I won't show you it, but we're going to start with setting up our WordPress site to use Google Analytics for with Google Tag Manager. I like the Google Tag Manager setup as an interface between your analytics and your site. I don't like using analytics plugins, especially for if you're just a straight up membership site. We don't really need it. Really, analytics is just dropping in that Google Tag Manager script and then doing a lot within the Google side of things if that's the analytics plugin or platform you choose. There are other analytics platforms besides Google Analytics that are more privacy centered that people prefer overall. And a lot of people are anti Google data and things like that. This is specifically for Google. So if you're watching and you don't want to use Google products, hopefully there's still something useful in here relating to tips you can take back to your analytics platform and use those to understand more about the people using your site and tracking some conversion events within. So we're going to set up Google Tag Manager. Then we're going to set up a few things. We're going to set up custom dimensions which Google Analytics 4 also calls custom definitions. But these are custom data that you send based on your site type. So we're going to set up two types, the membership level of the person viewing your content. And then we're also going to set up the post type, which I found useful, especially in our site where we have unique post types. And you might find it useful if you have courses on your site or other products on your site or another CPT like recipes or something like that, that you want to see granular data about the post types being viewed by who on your site. We're going to set up some audiences in our Google Analytics for platform. So audiences are groups of members, groups of users browsing the site, and then you can filter reports by them. So we're going to set up an audience for a specific membership level ID. And I'll talk a little bit about other ways you can use audiences. We're going to set up conversion events, which is e-commerce analytics light, which is just tracking a certain endpoint on your site and attaching a conversion to it and saying, this is a conversion. When people sign up for free, if people submit this form, if people get this membership level, that's a conversion. And with any time and assuming we don't have too many questions, we're going to finish with a robust e-commerce setup. I don't know if we'll get there. We'll try. So I'm going to dig in. I'm going to share my screen. Sam's going to bring it up. Before and we're going to go. That, Kim, <laughs> we already have a question, actually. Oh, good. Okay, let's try it. It'll help guys do and you, think maybe. Do you recommend not using Google Site Kit for some reason? I like Google Site Kit. It's just that I didn't find a way to plug into it in the way that I needed to, the specific kind of custom data that I needed. And I just found it a lot easier to write it myself. So you'll see this code. Site Kit will help you deploy a Google Tag Manager script on your site and connect that. But because we're looking at custom data that Paid Memberships Pro isn't already communicating to Site Kit, it isn't available in SiteKit. I found SiteKit was like an unnecessary component here. It does create a dashboard within your WordPress admin of a mini view of things. So if you love that feature, there's probably a way for a developer to take some of the custom code in this tutorial and filter the Google SiteKit data to also push additional information into Tag Manager. I just, I was like recreating almost everything except the embed of my Tag Manager script. So I was like, why am I using SiteKit? I don't, really need this. It's fine to use it. And if you don't need any of these custom things we're using here, you can keep using SiteKit just fine, but maybe you'll switch. Maybe you won't. We'll see. I hope that answers. That doesn't answer that at all. Okay. Is my screen? Okay. Here's my screen. Okay. So this is a demo site 
We're using InstaWP more and more now. So I've always used local, which is formerly owned by Flywheel. I think it's a WP Engine product now for a local version, but now I'm starting to use InstaWP more, which is cool. We have a tutorial on our site about setting up a demo, a WordPress demo, and it'll help you deploy a site instantly on InstaWP, which is really cool. But I have a few snippets preloaded. So this is a basic WordPress site. This has a basic version of Paid Memberships Pro installed. I've created three membership levels, a free level, a monthly, and an annual level. So that's all done in the background. Now we're going to say, oh, hey, we're, we didn't set up analytics ever. We're a year post-launch. We should do that. Or we're pre-launch and we want to have analytics in place from day one. So let's start by looking in our analytics. So I set up a new blank analytics property in Google Analytics. So if you don't even know how to do this piece, there's great tutorials from Google for this. So we're just going to get like our basic site set up here in this. So we have this deployed and then we can start adding some stuff. This is what Google Analytics calls a data stream. You can use the same analytics property to stream in data from multiple places. Most people just have a website. You might not have an app. You might not have other streams of data, but let's say we added this URL for this demo site we created and we inserted the URL. So it's going to give us kind of a way to connect it. Why is it taking so long? This is the downside of being home when your kids are home and having poor internet. Hopefully I'm still connected to the stream. Am I? It says I am. Yeah. You, we still Last have you. Time. you still hear me. Okay. But this is mad at me for some reason. Let's see what happens. To be it's fair, thinking. I have noticed that GA4 is a lot slower than Ooh, UA. That's possible. Okay. I did set up our stream. My website, I named it. That's the URL. And then it gives you these two IDs. We're going to use this measurement ID in Google Tag Manager. So you're going to see me pop, bouncing back and forth between analytics and tag manager. They're both Google properties, but we're going to now set up the tag manager. So I already created a tag manager property, tag manager account for this open office hours. If you don't have one yet, it's also one of those things, just go and read the Google tutorials, follow through with them. But the first thing we're going to do is add a tag so we can start tracking our Google analytics. So this, we'll just call this our GA4. And then we choose tag configuration. The measurement ID is that ID right here, part of the setup. And I'm not going to edit these fields to set yet. We'll do these later. We're just going to get a basic setup. Okay, so that's our tag. And then triggering, mostly for the basic tag for analytics, all pages. Save. Okay, so right now we have tag manager and we have one tag firing. I'm going to save these changes to our tag. What's cool about Google Tag Manager, it lets you manage versioning. So if you have multiple people working in this, or if you notice something breaks, you have a history of all the tags you added when you turn things off or turn things back on. Okay. So now the next step to setting this all up in the WordPress site is adding this tag into the WordPress site on the front end. So I'm going to show you the code snippet I use for this. This is not connected to SiteKit like we talked about or any other analytics platform. It's just literally a code snippet that adds Google Tag Manager to my site. This is what it looks like. It's a really simple code and I'll be posting recipes for all of this later, but we just need to update this default with our Google Tag Manager data layer. Save changes, and that should populate on our site. How do we know that it's working? What we do is click this preview button. And this is going to be a little weird because it's not going to connect. It's going to open a separate window that I don't think I have shared into here, but I'm just going to click around so you can see that it's doing stuff. And then Oh, it still says it's connecting. Why does it say that? Debugging analytics is one of the most complicated things. I really like this tag manager. Why does it want to connect me? Try again. Preview. Connect. It's just like hanging up there. Okay. Did it say it connected it? I don't know why it didn't. But anyway, we're going to look. You're looking off the screen that I can't see. Oh, why doesn't it have it on here? No, it doesn't have it on here. Is that active? Maybe it's because I'm logged in. Sometimes it doesn't like that you're logged in. Go back. 
We didn't hit it. Take too long for us to hit a pick up here. Huh. Huh. Let me log back in. It's going to be a lot of this today because this is just a, it's a funky thing. A few creds. All right. Let me log in again. It's a weird username for this InstaWP site, so it's not something I have memorized. Okay. Snippets. All snippets. Oh, you know what you have to do? Activate your snippet. I was, oh, good thing it's such a simple issue. Okay, we did activate our snippet now. That's the thing with the code snippets plugin. You can turn on and turn off certain things. So you actually have to turn on the snippet to run it. All right, so now we will go back to what we were doing and run this test and just verify that our Google Tag Manager is able to connect it says it's connected, right? I'm navigating around just so we can see a little bit of what gets tracked here. Okay, this preview is that debug tool that we all always wanted from Google Analytics. Like how do we know things are working? It takes a day to get real data populated. There's some real-time data in Google Analytics, but it takes some time to get data populated and to verify it's working. So you'd be constantly like, okay, I set it up. Let's see what happened. But with this preview tool in Google Tag Manager, it gives you the instant, feedback. Yes, we're firing this GA4 tag. That means that we're going to be sending data to your analytics site. So if we go back into analytics, we should have some real-time data, which is cool. Universal Analytics didn't have great real-time user data, but we know now, oh, there's a user on the site. That's us. It's nobody else. It's really just us. But we know that our tag manager is set up properly. So that's the first step. I'm going to close this stuff because otherwise we're going to have window mania. All right. So next thing I want to do is set up what I what are called by Google custom dimensions or custom definitions. And this is your membership site sending unique data about the people browsing it and the content being viewed so that you can create better reports and view more details about the people using your site. So one of the most important ones I like to add on a membership site is the membership level of the user viewing the content or visiting the site. And that would also include a no level user. So someone who's not logged in or someone who's logged into an account that doesn't have a membership level attached to it. And why is that cool? That's really cool because it can show you pages that are most important to your members by level. So you can say, oh, all of our members love this course the most. Or a lot of our non-members are viewing the course page and that's a part of the conversion funnel for them. So you can get good data if you start doing this. So. This is going to be a little tricky. We're going to show you how to set it up. So you have to set up dimensions in a few places, but the first place is here within your Google Analytics account under custom definitions. So settings, I go fast, I know. Settings, custom definitions, and then you'll see a list here of any that are already present in the site. Google Analytics tracks a few built-in dimensions, I guess I'll say. These are just the ones that are unique to you. So we're going to set up one called membership level. And under scope, this just is it a site specific event or is it specific to the person viewing it? So a membership level is specific to the user that's viewing it. So we say this is a user scope and it's going to be the membership level. This is only for internal use of the person viewing the site, right? Select the user property. We're going to also just call this membership level. You'll see where we set that up later. The dimension name doesn't have to be that format, but I found it easiest for me to just name it all the same thing. Name the dimension the same as the user property. And this, these steps are in this blog post. Sam, if you want to pull that link up, how to set custom fields, how to send custom fields to Google Tag Manager, which is what we're doing now. But they also have to be recognized within analytics as properties. The next one I want to do is post type, which is what we talked about at the beginning. If you have a site that has a lot of post types, WordPress by default has pages and posts. If you have an e-learning site, you might have a lesson or a course or some other unique post type uh, recipes if you're a recipe blogger or something like that. So I find it helpful to have post type in there if, you're, if you want to break down your data more specifically and rather than filtering on URL parameters, just knowing the post type. For Pay Memberships Pro, we use this. We have add-ons on our site. We sell as part of our membership packages and I track the post type being viewed add-on, and that tells me some of our most popular add-ons by user membership level. 
and I can watch, oh, these add-ons are having a rise in traffic. What's going on? Oh, it's because it's almost the holiday gifting season. Our gift membership add-on starts to trickle up at that time of year. So this is the post type, the content being viewed. And again, we set the event parameter to match the dimension name. And that's just for our own sanity. Okay, so now we have our definitions or our dimensions set up in analytics. We're gonna also add them as variables in Tag Manager. So you'll see here, these are the built-in variables and that just comes for free kind of with Google Analytics, with Google. Now we're gonna add these user-defined variables and these are not user-defined because they're on the scope of the user, like that previous thing, but defined by us as the user. So we'll call this one membership level and then we'll call this under variable configuration, it's gonna be a data layer variable and it'll be membership level. We don't have a default value. We don't have to format it. And I never change this thing. This will all make sense soon. This is like the set it up and then you know it. And then post type, how do you spell that? It's like this. Again, it's a data layer variable because our custom code is gonna build the data layer send it to Google Tag Manager, who's gonna do the processing and then it'll be available to us in Google Analytics. Okay, post type. Okay, so now we have Tag Manager Analytics set up with these custom data. Let's look at the code snippet we need to put on our site to add the custom. I'm gonna turn it on first because then we won't forget after we do it. So this is also code I'm gonna drop into you. There's plugins like Monster Insights that build these in by default. They won't have membership level because they're not integrated with Paid Memberships Pro, but they will have some things like they might have this post type. They might have post date, post author, certain data that you can know about a post, the category, the tag, certain things like that it can know across the board because they build their plugin to interact and work with every WordPress site out there. So they're not building it specifically for paid memberships, bro. It would be cool if they integrated. They do with WooCommerce and a few other e-commerce platforms, but not with paid memberships pro at this time. Tell them you want it. Maybe they will. But for now to populate, a, if you don't want to go the plugin route, you don't want to add Monster Insight. It is a paid product or a premium product, I'll say. They have a free version. And this is that custom code. And I know when we do code demos in our tutorials, it's, ah, you know, what are you doing? This is one of those that's just a drop in and you never have to look at it again. And using the code snippets plugin makes it really easy to not break your whole site. Literally the link to the gist will be copy, paste, drop, and done for this one. The previous one, you did have to enter that custom ID. So for this version of code, I can talk through it at high level. We're building an array of data called the custom dimensions, right? Post type, remember we entered that in the previous step. <coughs> Sorry, hold on, I got a horse. Okay. And then membership level is the other dimension we're sending, which will populate with the ID of the membership level for the current user, or it'll use the term no level, no underscore level if they're not a member of the site at all. It also sets no level if they're not a user. So if you wanted to further be able to segment not logged in from logged in no level people, you could change these defaults if you really need to go that deep. I'm not a huge analytics person, so it's funny that I'm doing this. We like look at our analytics once in a while. We don't stare at them and make huge decisions on them, but some people are very analytics focused. So this is that adds custom dimensions for membership level and post type. So technically in our site, if we look, oh, it's still trying to connect to this. Oh no, I lost my site. What was it called? Why did it lose my site? Crayfish, that's right. It comes up, InstaWP has the funniest names for the sites. Okay, so what we should be able to do, just let me verify that this is installed. We're viewing the site, we're logged in. I don't think we have a membership level. Yep, so we can see our tag manager script is here. And then this is that data layer. We talked about the data layer variables to push the membership level. I don't have a membership level. We were on the homepage of our site. That doesn't have a post type. It's just a homepage. This one should have post type post. Yep. So the data is sending good. The only thing I want to adjust is the priority of these two snippets because Google Tag Manager does recommend that you push the data to the data layer before you show the Tag Manager script. So I'm just going to adjust that. I don't know how 
I haven't tested it that it really fails without, but we want to run this one later. So I'm going to adjust the priority of this snippet. Where it should move it down. Yep. Okay, so now we're pushing our data to the data layer before we, we embed the script. Okay. The last step is just to update that GA4 tag to send our custom dimensions. And that's part of the tag configuration. Our field name, is, if I push here, you'll see it'll come up membership level and it comes from the data layer. I don't think I have to do this. No, it comes from the value of membership level of the site. And then the other one was post type and it comes from post type. It's one of those things, if you just go slow, slower than me, follow all these steps, you're going to be set up. And then hopefully Google doesn't introduce a whole new analytics method next year and you don't have to do this again. So I'm going to submit and publish our container. I don't always add a message to why, but if you do it, like I said, if you have multiple people working this or you want to know what you did and what you changed. All right. So let's verify that it's receiving our custom dimensions. It's going to open our debug window again. You won't see me playing around on the site here, but I'm going to click through to a few posts, a few pages. It doesn't let me like go to a page. Just so we can populate some data in there. Okay. So it got our stuff. How do we verify that it's actually getting that data layer variable? So in any of these kind of summary events that happened, these page views, I was like clicking around the site. I went to my account page. I went to a blog post, yada. You can click and then dig into one of them. See on the data layer what value was sent. So we should be good. We know that our tag manager is receiving the post type of the, pay, of the post viewed. That was the membership account is a page that was viewed. I still no level because I didn't have a level. So I feel like we checked that box. We got our data layer variable sending. Unfortunately, in analytics, it's not like instant data. So we're not going to get to see what that looks like in the analytics side in this demo, but we can see it in another property I have that I'll click through to. I'm going to take a pause and just see if there's any questions to this point. If anyone's passed out from how crazy this all is to set up. How are we doing, Sam? Oh, your producer passed out a while ago. No. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> Kidding, I'm kidding. You're actually making it seem a lot easier than the WordPress talk that we went to in the Montclair oh, for yes, WordCamp because that was like way over my head. And but this actually seems like it's pretty straightforward for those it's who are. A lot asking, of, go ahead. Yes, for those who are asking, I will be editing this early next week and publishing the edited version to YouTube, so you can keep an eye on our Stranger Studio YouTube channel, and it will be there. I promise. Just give me some time. And then Jamie did have a question. I'll throw it up. And our, yeah, our friend Jamie's back. So I'm excited to see Jamie again. Jamie's thinking of using Mat Matomo Analytics instead of mm -hmm. Google Analytics since it tracks things and stores data on site only. Also have a WordPress plugin. What nice. are your thoughts on that? I haven't used it. Is this the one I pulled up here? It's Looks cool. Like yeah. It. it gives you data ownership. So you're not, your data is not sitting in Google's cloud somewhere, even though Google says that they're not using it or looking at it or yada. So totally cool. I don't have an integration code that will help you track membership level in this platform, but because it's all within the site, what's cool about that is it's probably, you don't have to, you might not have to historically. The thing about setting up Google analytics is it's only from this point forward. So if you were like operating a membership site for 10 years, you're like, I'll just throw membership level as a data point up there. I wonder what it's been doing for 10 years. It's only from this point forward. So it's very possible that a native analytics platform like this could do that historic data, which could be cool. But it's I would have to look into it and see how it works. I would just keep an eye on how large that data set gets and make sure that you're doing everything you can on your side because data is still data. So everyone who has an admin in your membership site is going to have access to that data, which is fine. It might not only be you, but I think the just like with analytics, the more data and the more information you have in your own site and you're tracking, it can explode your database, make your site really big. It probably won't slow down the front end of your site, but the reports might get slow depending on the hosting scale you're on. I say, go for it. Tell us how it works. And if they have a cool developer orientation area, it might help us and we can write some custom recipes to get membership level data in there. So you could have these similar reporting. 
That would be cool. Yeah. And then before you continue, just so you know, you have a shout out from Kingfish Files that you're a genius. <laughs> okay, I'll take it. Who is that? Is that one of our <laughs> team members who made a fake Google account? Thank you. <laughs> it's really I'll decent. take it. <laughs> I did feel like a genius earlier this week when I finally cracked a piece of this analytics demo. And I think I went, yeah. And Jason was like, what'd you do? And I was like, I can't believe I really finally did it because it was tedious to get in place, but it's in place now. So I'm going to just kind of not look at it too closely, but thanks. Yeah. Put it in place and don't touch it. Yeah. Awesome. Okay. okay. You can continue. Good to go. Okay. The next thing I want to set up is I want to show you how to set up some audiences in Google Analytics. Um, membership level ID is a number, depending on the number of memberships you have, it might be one. I know six is our standard level. 20 is our plus. 21 is our builder. Seven is our free. Like I'll know that for the rest of my life. If you have a ton of levels, you might not know the name. So we're sending this membership level data in, but it's all ID driven. So audiences are going to give you in analytics, a way to filter user reports, any reports by that audience. So it comes with a few built in. It's here under the admin settings, audiences. So it builds in a purchasers and an all users audience. I'm going to add one. I went too fast again. Let me start over. Okay. I'm going to go slower. So I did audiences, new audience create a custom audience. And this is where you like set up these kind of filters for who's in this audience. So I'm going to say we want to include membership level that contains one or membership level. Actually, I'm going to change this to two, two or three. Okay. I'm going to call this paying and I'll show you why I'm setting up this one. Okay. A new part of Google Analytics 4 is focused on privacy and data retention. So some of the defaults in analytics won't maintain data as for forever. So universal analytics was like forever data, right? GA4 is more privacy focused, trying to be. So they do have some limits on how long data is kept. So I'm not sure what the maximum limit is. I think that it's 14 months, but... For this demo, that doesn't matter to me too much. If it really will matter to you, you should adjust it. We set up a level called paying members. Why did we set up paying members? We have three levels on the site. ID one is a free, two and three are paid. So this is giving me a way to filter my reports now in the future when the data is actually there by who paid us as a member. So purchasers is that built into Google Analytics. That would be if you had full e-commerce tracking set up for Google Analytics within your e-commerce website. We don't have that yet in the site. We just have these audiences right now. So we know that the people who have a two or a three had to have paid us at some time. Maybe we gave them the level for free. Maybe they got a refund later. Who knows? But for the bulk of people who have these levels will have had to pay us. We could make an audience as well called free members. There's no limit to the number of audiences that you create. And we'll, this will be a level ID of one. And we could make an audience if we really wanted to all members, we could make one for each level. And I'm going to do with this one does not, let's see, is not, does not contain, let's do no level. Cause we know that in our custom code, we are sending no level as a string. If they're not a member, anyone who has a membership level that is not no level is a member. It's like a everyone except them kind of thing. So that's how you set up audiences. You can use these audiences in your reports. So you can do, let's do, this might not work because we have no data. But let's say add a filter, include audience name, paying members. Okay. So that makes this report only show us the activity of people who are of level two or three. So it, those audiences are shortcut. There's no data here. We just added it. Like I said, it's going to be like Friday till I can get, well, actually, this is not an active site, but for any active membership site, it's about a day since you did it, that the data will start populating. But audiences give you that quick way to filter any report here on the site. So I did pages and screens because it's what I'm most used to looking at from the universal analytics, but you could do other things too. You could look at 
traffic acquisition by membership level to get an idea of how people, how your paying members are getting back into your site or how they're coming to your site. Are they coming from an organic search? Are they coming, are they being referred by a top affiliate of yours and coming back to the site? So it can give you like that deeper level of data about the site. You could also on this pages and screen, we filtered by membership level. You could also do, we don't have data, so I can't do a post type filter. See how it says no data currently available for this dimension. Once that's populated, you could filter the view by membership level and post type. So you could say, show me all level two members who viewed my add-ons or viewed my courses, let's say. And it would give you deeper data of who's browsing around your site, what levels they are, and things like that. So that's audiences. Any question about audiences, you don't have to use them. You can just filter by membership level ID. If you only have one membership level ID, don't set up an audience. You don't have to. But it does help you if you don't have those IDs top of mind and just want to have some, or have some groups in place. So you're not on every report filtering by 10 different level IDs. You can just say, the people are paying me monthly and yearly. If those are two distinct groups, create two audiences for them. And then you can have that data. Cool. It's 2.34. We're doing great. I think we're going to talk about conversion events, which I would call like e-commerce analytics light. And we do have code that will track like all of the analytics for your e-commerce. But membership sites are unique, especially Paid Memberships Pro. That's a one-step checkout. So uh, if you think of a traditional shopping experience online, you're going to browse a catalog. You're going to click through and view an item. You might customize some features about it. And then you're going to add it to your cart. You're going to view your cart. You're going to go to your checkout. And you might even go to the first step of checkout, which is where are you shipping this? And then the next step of checkout, where's this being billed to? And the final step of checkout, confirm all your details and submit. And then your actually purchase is your final event. So Google Analytics e-commerce tracking wants you to track all of that. It wants you to track who viewed, who added to cart, who viewed the cart, who went to the checkout step one, checkout step two. In Pay Memberships Pro, it's really flattened. There's view your membership levels page, view your checkout page, submit, confirm you're a member you purchased, right? So I had trouble when I was setting up the full e-commerce integration for our site, because you have to make some decisions. You have to decide what is a view of an item for Paid Memberships Pro. Is it viewing the membership levels page and seeing all the levels on that page? Is it viewing the checkout page? Is that a more firm view item event? What is add to cart on Paid Memberships Pro? Is it the act of clicking from your levels page to your checkout page? Is that kind of like a intent to buy, I guess I'll say. And then obviously purchase is purchase. Reaching that final confirmation after payment or just user registration. What's cool about conversions, you don't have to think about any of that I just talked about, which is nice. So they have built-in reports for conversions by event name. These would be the default events built in. We're going to set up a custom conversion event that just looks at traffic who land on the confirmation page, which we know that every paid memberships pro checkout eventually lands on a confirmation page. So we're going to add a custom event and we're going to call it free sign up. And we're going to add a I think it's called page location. Okay. No. Ends with. Okay. I'll talk this through once I, in my brain, figure this out. It was like, I could have this all pre-populated for you, or we could do it together. We're doing it together. Okay. So this event is going to call a free sign up event when anyone on the site hits our confirmation page for level ID one, I'm calling it free sign up because level ID one is our free membership level. Create. We're going to do two more of these. We're going to call, what are our levels names? Monthly. Okay. Monthly. How do you spell that? It doesn't matter. The event name's internal also. It doesn't actually have to match the membership level. Monthly membership checkout. I'll call. And the event name will be, not the event name, the page location ends with, if you change the slug of your membership confirmation page to something else, you would not use this. But I would always recommend when people actually check out and reach the confirmation page in one 
experience. It appends that level ID at the end. That's the super important piece for this. You wouldn't want to just be membership confirmation unless your event was anyone checked out. If you were going that high level with your e-commerce tracking, but this conversion event, we just want always appending that level ID too. Again, if you change the name, the permalink of your confirmation page, you could do that. By default, Paymerships Pro sets up all of our pages nested under membership account, but because we're using that end ends with operator, we don't have to do that. So that, and then we'll have a final one called, what's it called? Annual. I copied that from my, this is also one of those you have to do it beforehand. Oh, shoot. I wanted to do something here too. Okay. Do I have it? No, I'm going to show you what that is. Why is this e-commerce light? Okay. The level ID three is our annual membership. What you can do here, which is cool, is add these parameters and modify. So you could attach a dollar value. I think it's called revenue. No, value? Value. Okay. Conversion events in that are monetary, if you want them to appear as like a dollar value in your analytics reports, it won't match your true revenue reports on Paid Memberships Pro or even within your payment gateway, but it'll give you like a loose approximation of the value of those conversion events that you can then see throughout all of the funnel of the site. And Google Analytics will trickle out some of that value and say, oh, they visited this blog post about Google Analytics Tag Manager in their buyer's journey. We're going to attribute a little bit of value to that page. So it can help you identify the high value pages in your site, the high value posts in your site that are a part of a conversion funnel for a large number of users. The higher the page value that Google Analytics attributes, the more important that page is to getting in front of people, the more that page contributes to conversions, you could assume, right? So what did, what is this? This is our annual. How much does that cost? I would just set the value to like the dollar value people most often pay at checkout. Let's update on our monthly, that same thing. Parameter value. And what is that? I know people might use coupons, so these might not be completely correct, but we're not using Google Analytics as our accounting system. We're not reporting our taxes based on the e-commerce revenue that analytics supports. We're trying to loosely figure out what pages are part of people's buyer's journey, where are people visiting prior to their checkout and their conversion event on my site. So we created these events. We have to mark these events. I know they don't show up here, which is really weird and it's confusing to you, but they are all here. They're just not going to show up here until they've started receiving data, which I think is like a really weird thing. And then we want to add those same events as conversions. You want to use the same event name to be a conversion event. So that means it's going to log it as a conversion. I, If anyone knows analytics better than me and thinks I'm doing this wrong, but this is how I found it to work. So you have to add things in two places and tag them as conversion events. I'm just looking at the names here, monthly membership checkout. It all has to match and be happy. Once it's set up, you're done. Okay, cool. So in essence, if I could prove to you, I would that this is working, but we should now, after a day has gone by in our reports, engagement conversions, we should see a list of event names here that show conversions. I'm gonna click over, I'll show you our well, I'll show you on, right now, on my other test site. If I This is like a conversion event I set up for another demo site that shows up here. So it's a purchase event. This is a built-in one. And we can view specific information about that and the dollar value attached to it. That was set up in real e-commerce, not in pretend e-commerce like we just did with these conversion events. I'll show you in, oh, this is still a purchase. I want to see, how do I undo this? I want all, oh, here, free download. So Paid Memberships Pro has a conversion event for free user sign up. I don't have a value attached to it because the plugin's free, but this is those people who are signing up for Paid Memberships Pro for free membership accounts. And this gives me, oh, where are they coming from? And then you can, of course, you can filter this by other sources. Like for example, if people are clicking links within the admin of their Paid Memberships Pro plugin, coming to our site and joining for free, I can see here, oh, look, our plugin is bringing in that many conversions in the past month. I can see too that people are clicking through from wordpress.org. That's our readme page and signing up for free. People are clicking through from Elegant Themes, which is Divi. 
I think, on the Divi platform. Buddy Boss is sending us traffic. And then, of course, our YouTube channel, which you're on now, on our GitHub account. It's showing me where people came from that ended up at a conversion event. I can see the same, like, pages and screens, I think. I can see events, and I can filter them by free download. Okay, so these are pages viewed by event free download. I think, can I sort this by this here? Oh, the event only happens on that page. I wanted to see how it trickles through, but you can do that too. So that's conversion events. And that I would call is like e-commerce light. We didn't really put anything new. No code snippets are new on our site. It's just use analytics and specific endpoints on our site and us knowing the structure of our site enough to say, that's a conversion. You could do a conversion event for other things. Let's say you have a lead magnet that's a ninja form and it submits to a thank you page. That thank you page is a conversion event. And if you wanted to track in analytics, that conversion event, you would set up the same event we just did with that page path. What was it? Something like that to the thank you page that people only really arrive on if they've completed a few steps beforehand. E-commerce light, but also tracking other kinds of conversions and helping you see that data. So I'm gonna pause for questions. We have 15 minutes left. I'm trying to avoid talking about e-commerce, so please ask questions. No. <laughs> we do have a question. So if a customer chooses to pay in a single payment or an installment, the report would show it as the same type of purchase in the report. Are you? How are your levels set up? Are your levels one level with payment plans or are they distinct levels, level IDs? If it's distinct level IDs, you could see that data uniquely. And you could also, well, they would have different values. I'm sure that your one-time payment is a larger value than your installment payments. I will wait for a response. Distinct okay. levels. That's okay. Yeah, but if it's a unique level ID, you could see it differently. If you're using our payment plans add-on, the confirmation page will be the same because they're technically getting the same level ID. So you wouldn't really want to use this conversion. You could use this conversion thing in combination. No, you would need... If it's the same level ID, you'd probably need the robust e-commerce to, to actually set the value because the value would be different. Or if you knew that you were passing the value through some e-commerce code, you could also, where we set the override event parameters, you could pull data from the data layer like we talked about first. They are using distinct levels. Yeah, so you're good. Yeah. You'll see those separately because they will be separate audiences or at least just separate conversion endpoints because the confirmation page with that level with the ID parameter will be different for each one. And you can make the value of the whatever you choose. If you want to make the installment value the full price, you could do that. For a while, we would add in Universal Analytics, we had our free membership sign up set to like a dollar value, right? Because it was what we realized in our own reports was really the value of a free user. We don't do that anymore. I think that was a limitation that Google Analytics wouldn't track goals for $0. They all they wanted them to be attached to a positive value of money. It was maybe more that than anything else, but this does track for free for $0 purchases. And then the same person, King Fisher File, is wondering if they can ask follow-up questions after the live. Sure. We do have a community Slack that we're trying to ramp up. So if you like talking with people, it's more developer focused right now, but we'd love to talk more about the kind of the business of running a membership site, which is something we do and you do. So we have this in common, even though ours is a software product and yours might be an information product or anything else that it is. So go to paidmembershipspro.com forward slash Slack or reach out on our contact page and we can talk. Probably don't DM I'm me actually, on social media. That's a hard one for me to keep those conversations in and you'd just be hitting me. But if you use our contact page or our Slack, there are more people checking in. They might ask me about this because I've become our analytics knowledge base on the team. But any other questions you have will get answered. I'm actually going to drop the Slack invite link in oh, the chat. Oh, that's perfect. Yeah, it might so be like- I just behind. grabbed it from the community. Um, so real- free to join that and nuggets in that too so we can talk nugget is in there but chicken that knows everything yes but yes we would love to follow have follow-up questions that would yeah. be fun and i'm honestly like i'm just implementing this all for us as well we were slow to adopt google analytics for we found ourselves still using universal analytics like that tried and true platform we were really comfortable and happy in that we just pulled the rug out from my team on that i said no more I turned off our analytics, universal analytics tracking. I think that Google is disabling it. 
they say in June, I think of this year, it's not really worth anyone's time at this point to set that up, in my opinion, unless you have roll the dice and believe that Google's going to keep it around longer, but highly unlikely. I doubt it. Yeah. But you forcing me to use it for our social media analytics was yeah. cool because I did learn some new things there. So. There you go. Always be learning. Should we do our e-commerce have- if no one else has questions? And we don't have any more questions. Okay. I tried I my best to not into have to. E-commerce. I have to talk. I okay. So one final snippet I pre-populated in our site. Oh, I should turn it on. So unless it won't break the site, it would have told me. Okay. E-commerce tracking. I talked in the beginning about how weird e-commerce tracking is for Paid Memberships Pro because there isn't a view item page. There isn't a step out steps to check out. There isn't really a remove item from cart. So if you look at analytics, I can try to pull this up. We'll see even what this pulls up. Okay. So this is a 400,000 word document of the Google recommended events for e-commerce. And this whole list are the different events that they have built in. You can create custom events, but what's nice about choosing from the built-in events to, you know, shoehorn, make them fit to Paid Memberships Pro is that some of the reports that are already built in to analytics, you won't have to customize. They'll just like work for you as is. So the ones that are default view on analytics in the reports are view item is on a default report, add to cart and purchase. So when I looked at this list, like begin checkout felt like a better e-commerce event choice for Paid Memberships Pro because it's not a cart. You're already on a checkout form, but I made the call because analytics, e-commerce, and I'll, let me jump to my other testing site because it actually has data in it. Under monetization overview, no, I want to be on e-commerce purchases. Sorry. Okay. It has items viewed by item name over time. Items viewed by items added to cart by item name. So these, I didn't customize this report at all. Brand new GA4 account, monetization, e-commerce purchases, built-in report. It wants you to have events like view, item, add to cart, and purchase. So the assumption I made in my code that's running on our site right now is view item is any hit to our pricing page, which is weird. Look, they're all 29. Of course they are. The pricing page shows all three levels. It's not that helpful for analytics at that level. Oh, which shirts are people most interested in? No, this is, we're not a traditional e-commerce. It's not going to show you if these stonewashed jeans are more popular than these dark wash skinny jeans. It's not that kind of thing, but it will show you that buyers check out funnel. I guess you'll say people who hit the levels page, what pages are they going? Which checkout are they going to next? And then of them, who's going to actually complete a purchase. So that's the flow that's built into e-com- Google Analytics e-commerce. That's the flow I think I'd recommend using the view item, add to cart and purchase event. So for this site, I set it up a few days ago and I made a bunch of fake purchases. So we would have actual data in here, but it will break down hits to the levels page, hits to the checkout page and conversions from there. Cool. So how does this work? Let's look at this snippet. This is like a, I actually removed the view item piece from this. I I can add it back and I'm going to share the full code, but this is looking at, okay, are we looking at a checkout page? Perfect. It sets up the e-commerce data layer. So just like our data layer for membership level and post type, this is all the data Google Analytics wants to see. And you can see that on this Google Analytics page. I don't know if you can, actually I should go to the add to cart one. Sam, I don't know if I can send you this to bring up, but it's a good resource as a reference point for the required variables based on the event you choose. If you choose a different event, that makes more sense. If you've crafted landing pages for each of your levels, you don't really want that view item to be your levels page. You probably want it to be each individual landing page you've created for your different membership offerings, if that's what you're doing. So just reference this. If you're getting errors, there are some required values. You'll see them denoted here with that yes in the column. If your analytics isn't getting the data layer variable completely, it probably means your data's formatted incorrectly or you're not sending a required variable or a required parameter to the event type. So it's not going to log it. This doesn't look right to me. So 
That is the event to view for items put in the checkout. And then there's a similar event for the checkout page. I do have a free level. So there's the checkout page doesn't load like the PM Pro invoice object. So you have like custom code there, glaze over this. And then here's where it actually pushes the data. This is active. This is on our site. So what do we have to do in Google Tag Manager? We're going to make a new tag and call it GA4 events. And this was me just poking around Google Analytics documentation from Google. There's a lot of people who have written Google Analytics docs and none of them worked for me. I would just go right to the source. It's a GA4 event linked to our GA4 config tag. And then in the tutorials I found, it rather than making an event for each unique step of that process we talked about, the add to cart, the view item, the purchase, it said just pull the event from the data layer, which is these two curly braces with the word event, event. Okay, under more settings, click send e-commerce data. It's from the data layer. I think that's all we have to do. We will see. That is the tag. And then you have to say, when does this trigger? And it's going to trigger when certain events get pushed to the data layer. It sounds like I'm speaking in Greek, but we're going to call this the purchase event. And it is a custom event. And the event name is purchase. I think all custom events is what we do. That's one of them. And then there's another one called add to cart. Custom event, event name, add to cart. Where did I get those event names from? It's in our snippet right here. But it's also on that. I want to highlight it. It makes it really hard to see. But if you see this light blue line, add to cart is the format there that's in this recommended events as well. That's the event name that's getting pushed by the data layer. Okay, back to Tag Manager. So we're gonna trigger our custom event, GA4 events on if Google Tag Manager sees an add to cart event come through or a purchase event come through. Okay, that's why I don't wanna show us this. It's just like a new layer of just go with it. And when I was working on it, I was like, Let's just try this. Let's see if this works. Okay. So we're going to do our preview again, which lets us in real time see what our tag is firing. I'm verifying all of these are on. Yes. We know that we're running Tag Manager latest in the site. So let's, I'm going to close these weird windows because it was getting confused. What's this one? Okay. We're ready. I think. Connect to the site. Again, I'm going to go, how can I show you this? Sam, can you? I don't know if it will work. I can't do this in the same window. I'm sorry. What I'm doing, I'll talk you through it. I am in this in another window. I am submitting some checkouts. We can actually see your summary populate on the left side of your screen. Oh, so you're so watching it happen. We're watching the summary come through as oh, you're good, clicking good, around, good. even though we can't see you click around. I'm just buying a bunch of stuff. Wouldn't you wish people would shop your membership like this? $25, $25, $100, $100. That would be great. Okay. I'm going to stop. Did it look like it was working? Okay. Cool. I think it was working. So this gives me that summary. What events? Cool. It fired the add to cart, a purchase, another add to cart, a purchase ad. I bought four things here. Okay. So we know it worked. What we can also do is just verify that it's getting the right data. Here's a purchase event that was successful. Let's look at the data layer. Cool. This is the order ID on our site. So in our membership site, if we went to memberships, orders, we could search for this and find that transaction. I have in my tag, in our snippet on our site, we set the USD as the currency. The value is pulled from the level being purchased. If they used a coupon, it would also show up in here. That code does include some coupon logic. We don't need to do that. We're out of time anyway. I'm still here. I'm not shutting us off. We'll stay past three. The idea of the level, I have it prefixed with PM Pro, just in case you are also using e-commerce for your WooCommerce store, let's say, or you sold Lyft or LMS courses through their checkout process. This would help you distinguish one ID from another because it could be confusing. You have a product with product ID two and you have a level with level ID two. They're separate data in your WordPress site. It's totally possible. Probably not two because your products are usually higher levels than that. Item name is the level name. Affiliation is the site URL it came from. Index is like the list it was viewed on. I just set it to zero because it looked like 
it was a required field. It's always quantity one. You're not buying two at a time unless you're using sponsored members and then the price. So I'm going to assume this is set up properly. Again, we can't see that in our testing account that we're using today as real-time e-commerce. I don't think it shows you real-time e-commerce data. Oh, it does. It shows you purchases. So conversions by event name. Look, and it also got our custom audience, custom conversions. Cool. Okay. That is real-time data. Things are working. Remember those events and custom conversion events we set up here in Google Analytics? In my off-screen magic, I bought annual and I bought monthly. So you can see here, these conversions all happened. So cool. That's it. Can you believe it? It only really takes an hour to set up Google Analytics e-commerce and all of the time <sighs> we spent before. <laughs> okay. But yeah. I don't know how to distill this all into a single blog post. We will try. I think it has to be piece by piece or else it's going to be an overwhelming article to read. But there's a few ways to go about doing it. If you go the like the light e-commerce way, don't use that e-commerce script. Just set up a few conversion events and start using that. See if you're really using this data because it could take you eight hours, multiple days to set this up. We did it here pretty quick. I've been working on this for probably a year off and on. I won't say it's taken me that long, but I will say it's a little bit funky to set up and get it all working. Maybe you could be set up in an hour and it's a no brainer, but I never want sites to add analytics for things they're not even going to analyze. Don't let it just go sit there collecting data if you don't actually care and you're not going to make business decisions based on what that data tells you. So yeah, word of caution. I think our audience really enjoyed the- Yeah, I am so happy it worked. <laughs> <laughs> That's all. <laughs> That's it. We're taking like a two week break. Yeah. So then we'll be back on, I think it's April 13th. Perfect. With Kim and oh, Kim. Oh, we're going to have an Ask Me Anything about Paid Merchants Pro and WordPress with Kim Coleman and Kim White. And I will be producing. So we'll have three knowledgeable women to help people figure out their questions and kim white is in our support team has been with us i think three years now and a longtime wordpress community member kim runs the local wordpress meetup in the lehigh valley here in pennsylvania and also contributes her time as volunteer to sponsor team for wordcamp us and other wordcamps in our area knows a lot about the wordpress community and has been supporting people building websites through her own private work and then also with us here. So what I love about Kim is how much she advocates for our users. And I think it's because she's most recently in touch with site building and working directly with people building businesses on WordPress. So I'm like 12 years removed from that, but she's more recently worked with people who are finding the same things they struggle with as you, finding the same things that inspire them. So she'll be a good person to have. Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah. All right. But we will see everyone in two weeks. Two weeks, three weeks. Who knows? Check the paymarchespro.com forward slash live to get the full details. We'll be updating it a little bit after today, maybe tomorrow morning when we get the next event published for you. Cool. See you guys then. See ya.